Hello adventurer, Sergey from Core here. Today I'll be showing you the basics of uploading a 3D model, a 2D drawing, and some data to the Ellipse platform using Rhino and Grasshopper. If you're not familiar with the process of attaching attributes or reading attributes from geometry in Rhino, this is very simple. All you have to do is click on an object and make sure that you are in the Properties tab, and then just go ahead and click on Attribute User Text. Immediately, you will see a number of key value pairs associated with this object. And by clicking on other elements, we can also see all of the attributes assigned to them. Now, in order to push this geometry to the Ellipse platform, we're going to have to use Grasshopper. But before we do that, let's first make sure that we have the right plugins installed. On Foot for Rhino, you might be tempted to search for Ellipse, but actually what you need to search for is TT Toolbox. For those of you who don't know, TT Toolbox is a set of utilities and components developed and maintained by Core Studio, which, among many other things, also allows you to interface with Ellipse. So go ahead, click on TT Toolbox, and make sure to install the latest version. Now, back in Grasshopper, I already have a definition set up, so I'm just going to walk you through the steps and explain what is going on. At a high level, when we export geometry and data to Ellipse from Grasshopper, we're not pushing this information to the web app directly. Instead, we're going to use Grasshopper to export a series of files to a local folder. These files will be formatted in a very specific way. And then the next step for us would be to use Ellipse's web UI to manually upload these files to the platform. So this should explain why we are about to write a bunch of files to disk. So first of all, to export our mesh geometry, I have all of the elements that I want to become a part of my Ellipse 3D model referenced inside of this mesh param. And then the next step is to extract the unique IDs, uh, the GUIDs that Rhino assigns to every piece of geometry in the 3D document. That will allow us to extract the attributes from the geometry that we just referenced. And these are exactly the key value pairs that I showed you earlier. If you want to take a look at what these attributes look like, you can always pass the output of this component to a panel, uh, but you won't really see much because this is just a string representation of the attributes object with the ID of the Rhino geometry that uh, these attributes came from. But if you do want to peek inside, uh, you can always use the deconstruct attributes component that lives inside of the TT Toolbox 2.0. And this will give you access to the keys and values inside of your attributes object. So here are all of our keys and here are all of our values. And of course, the get attributes component itself is also located inside of the TT toolbox. We have our geometry, we have our attributes. Now, the last thing that we need to do is we need to generate a unique ellipse ID for every geometry element that we're uploading. In order to do this, we just need to count how many elements we have. So in this case, 48. And then we can use another handy utility inside of TT Toolbox, which is called Create GUIDs. It takes a number uh, for the amount of GUIDs that we want to generate, and it just outputs a series of random, globally unique identifier strings. In order to make those strings compatible with the Ellipse format, all we have to do is we have to concatenate a lowercase e and a hyphen and put the lowercase e and a hyphen before our GUID string. So here we have a properly formatted ellipse ID. So now that we have the geometry that we want to upload, the data that we want to upload, and the ellipse IDs for all of our elements, we can proceed to the next steps. So first of all, uh, let's try to export our 3DM file. This will contain the 3D geometry for our Ellipse 3D model. Here we have our meshes and we have our Ellipse IDs. And notice that we 
do not pass the attributes that we just extracted from our geometry. This is because the 3D, 2D geometry and the data inside of the Ellipse platform are independent from each other. They are all connected via the Ellipse ID. So if you have an element, let's say in 3D space, which has a specific Ellipse ID, you can find the associated drawing uh, for this element, and you can also find associated data. But we don't upload them together. We're going to generate a separate dataset file, we're going to generate a separate 3D file, and a separate file to contain our 2D representation of this object. So that's why we're just passing the geometry and just passing the ellipse ID uh, that we generated for each of those meshes. In order to assign an ellipse ID to 3D geometry in ellipse, we're going to use the create attributes component in TT Toolbox. And we're going to pass our ellipse ID as the name property inside of this component. So we have 48 ellipse IDs. We have 48 attributes objects that we are creating with the ideas in the name. And we have 48 meshes that we're trying to upload here. So the last step for us is to use the 3DM export component that can also be found inside of TT Toolbox alongside a whole series of export and import components that can be quite handy even in context outside of uploading data to Ellipse. A few other inputs that we have to provide is the path to a directory where we want this document to be saved. In my case, I'm using a simple C-sharp script that determines what directory this Grasshopper file is being run from. And I'm just appending a name of a subdirectory called sample output, which in my case is empty right now. You don't have to do this. You can just hard code your output directory inside of a panel and pass this as input to this component and it will work perfectly fine. I'm just doing this for convenience and so that other people could also easily use this file. Once we have the directory, we can also pass the name of the file. Uh, in our case, this is curtain wall. We don't need to provide the file extension because the 3DM component will automatically assign the .3DM extension once it saves our file. And finally, to trigger the save, we have the save Boolean input, which is just wired to this button. So this is how we're going to trigger the export for all of our files. So this is how we set up our 3D model to be exported into a 3DM file that we can then upload to Ellipse. Let's take a look at how we would set up 2D geometry uh, for a similar export. So here we have our meshes, and we need some sort of a way to turn them into a drawing. There's a number of ways you could do this. You could even draw it by hand <laughs> if you wanted to, but we're just going to use the make 2D components in Grasshopper to get a 2D representation of our 3D geometry. And in order to do this, we just need to pass our meshes in, and we also need to define a viewport in 3D space, which is going to determine the direction from which make 2D will be made. Now, we need some sort of a way to associate each of the curves that we are producing in this process with the original piece of 3D geometry that this curve came from. This will allow us later down the line, once we actually get to the ellipse application, to let's say click on a line in a drawing in ellipse and have a piece of 3D model highlighted indicating that we are looking at the same element. And this of course is simply done by assigning the correct ellipse IDs to our 2D geometry. So here we're passing our meshes and the same number of ellipse IDs. And of course the number of output curves that we're producing does not match the number of input meshes that we're feeding in. Here we have 48 meshes and we have 119 curves as output. This is fine because luckily Make2D actually provides you a list of indices which indicate which 
of the 3D objects this curve came from. So we can use this index to associate each of the curves with a specific ellipse ID. And that's exactly what we're going to do. A couple of cosmetic things. So we're going to rotate our drawing and arbitrarily scale it by a factor of 10. And then we're going to pass all of our curves to the export SVG component, which is located next to our export 3DM file, or at least in the same files tab. In order to assign our ellipse IDs to the curve geometry that we just created, we once again have to use the construct attributes component. But this time, instead of assigning these IDs to the name, we're going to assign them as a group. So that's the difference between assigning IDs to 3D geometry and 2D geometry in Ellipse. Once we have that, we can also add some graphics to our curves. So in this case, I'm just assigning black color, line weight of 2, and empty fill to all of our lines. But of course, you can get a lot more sophisticated with how you style your drawing and actually add some meaningful line weights and line colors. And once we have our attributes, we're just passing them in as well. The rest of this component is very similar to the export 3DM component. We're passing the directory, the file name, and we have the Boolean input that will trigger the save once we press this button. So now we are ready to save our data. And in order to do this, uh, we're grabbing the attributes that we've extracted earlier. So these are the attributes that actually have data key value pairs inside of them from our geometry. And in order to save attributes to disk, we can use the save attributes component that can also be found inside of TT Toolbox. But before we go ahead and save our attributes to disk, we need some sort of a way of connecting each attributes object with the 3D geometry or the 2D geometry that this set of data points came from. And in order to do this, once again, we're using ellipse IDs. However, in our case, because we're working with attributes directly, all we have to do is just add one more field to our attribute object because it's already a series of key value pairs. So we're just adding one more key value pair that ellipse will look for, and it's called ellipse ID. Notice that everything is lowercase and the I in ID is the only uppercase letter. So we can just take our ellipse IDs and make sure that our data tree matches the number of attributes that uh, we're providing here. And we can use the construct attributes component also to modify existing attribute objects. So this first input takes an existing attributes object and it allows you to append some additional key value pairs to it. So by the time our attributes exit on the output side, they already have this extra field assigned to them, which we can verify once again using the deconstruct attributes component. And if we take a look at the keys and values, we will see that first of all, in our keys, um, at the end, we have now the ellipse ID field, which we just added. And also in the values, we have something that in fact looks like an ellipse ID. So now that we have our 3D geometry, 2D geometry, and our data set up, we can just go ahead and press the magic button. And that will result in three files to be generated inside of our output folder. And now we can go ahead and navigate to the Ellipse web app to actually do the upload. This last part is very straightforward. Here I am in ellipse.studio. I'm just going to go ahead and add a new notebook. Let's call it Ellipse Demo. I'm going to go ahead and hit Create. And once I click inside this notebook, because I've never uploaded any assets to it, I am immediately prompted to do so. Clicking on Browse Files, let's go ahead and navigate to the three files that we outputted from Grasshopper. 
I'll select them all and click open. And here I have a chance to review my upload. Let's just go ahead and proceed. And a second later, the upload is done. And now I have my data, my 3D M file, and my 2D drawing all uploaded to my notebook that I just created. And at any time, if I want to come back here and update my data or add more drawings or add more 3D models, I can go ahead and click this button and add more assets. All right, folks, this is how you export 3D models, 2D drawings, and attributes to Ellipse from Rhino and Grasshopper. In the next tutorial, we'll be taking a look at Ellipse layouts and widgets that allow you to create engaging, interactive visualizations for the assets that you upload. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.